Hi visionaries, welcome back to my channel where it is my hope to inspire you to envision more for your life. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you are new here and you like what you see, please remember to subscribe and to click the gray bell to be notified the moment I upload another video. On this channel, we talk about all things brain health, mental well-being, personal development, ADHD, the whole gamut. Also, you can check me out over on my Instagram and my TikTok, good times over there. I do love me some Instagram and I feel like I can connect with you guys differently. Also, if you're interested in supporting my channel and connecting with me on a deeper level, check out my Patreon on that. I do go more in depth and a more personal level about my life and everything that I'm going on everything that's going on in my life basically so if you're interested in supporting my channel no pressure if not no hard feelings but that's there for your liking if you're interested also make sure to stick around to the end of this video because i have an exciting announcement and i will be praying for everybody in this video and yeah so let's get into it so obviously today we're going to be talking about mental health mental health awareness and tips on how to deal with just the struggles of mental health if you're in the throes of it because i know i made a video kind of along the lines of this topic in the early of january in the beginning of january the beginning of this year but since then i had basically gone down like another valley of like depression and it got really really dark to be honest i know i use humor to lighten things up but it was pretty depressing let's just put it that way it was really hard so i feel like i could speak from experience um and i'm really grateful to have gotten myself out of that mindset and i think a lot of it had to do with the ripple effects of losing my dad and mom i know i mention that all the time but i lost them back to back within two years on the two crappiest years of human society so it was rough but Without further ado, let's get into it. So these are my tips and also, also other suggestions. So I just thought they were really good tips and advice for anybody that's just struggling. So my first tip is to take a break. Remove yourself, take a break, step away from whatever it is that might be overwhelming you and causing your depression, if it's circumstantial depression especially, but take a break, take a vacation, a staycation, a daycation, take a day trip, take a road trip, go to a park, sit in nature, Take time away from people that might be stressing you out. And I recommend maybe doing it alone. Some people are so afraid of doing anything alone. Like if they're alone, that means they're a loser. But I feel like once you start to learn to appreciate your own company, there's also a safety in that. Don't isolate. But I think that there's striking. I know balance is a really tough word for some people, but I don't think that it's a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing to learn to enjoy your own company because you're going to be your own best friend at some points in life. And for me, I like to take away, take a day, a moment, a, a, a week or whatever, step away from it all and spend time alone in nature with you, yourself, your thoughts, meditate, reflect on things. Maybe just getting away might help you alleviate some of just the mental stress. And when you do things that might distract you, like going to a zoo or something new, go to a, a new place that you've never been to, it might pull yourself away from the internal thoughts that you're struggling in. And for me, I definitely choose to pray and spend time with God. I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and praying and just meditating on the word of God is something that always really helps me. That's like a sub tip, because I know not everybody is a Christian, but for me, that is always something that's really, really helped me out. Um, tip number two, which is kind of like, along the lines of what I just talked about is to remove yourself from social media as well. I know social media can be overwhelming. I think that it can be a bad, a, a good thing, but also it can be a bad thing if, if it's too much, if you're comparing yourself, if you're feeling like you're left out and you, you just can't seem to like get enough followers or likes on any of your stuff. Like social media is not real life. We all know this by now. It's been around long enough that we can kind of gather that. Um, but take, take a step back from social media. Just saying. So my other tip is to reach out to trusted people that are in your life. I know not everybody has a family that they feel like they can be totally honest with their mental health issues. But if you have a friend, a coworker, I don't even know, anybody in your life, a social media friend for that matter, that you feel like you could reach out to and connect with. And I recommend you guys cultivate social media friends. We all have those social media online friends that we've never met in real life, but they're like your BFF that you, you know, you've never met. I, I saw a meme recently making fun of like, don't make friends with strangers online. But then like you realize like a lot of your friends are strangers online. There are so many of you that I've connected with, especially over on my Instagram. And you're just like my little buddies. I love reaching out to you. I love that I inspire you and I help you. You feel like you're not alone, that you belong, that you're not crazy. And you make me feel the same way. And it's like a beautiful symbiotic relationship. And it's very kumbaya, if you know what I mean. The next tip I have is to ask for help. 
A lot of times people are afraid to ask for help because they feel like they don't want to be a burden or it's their situation's not that big of a deal. But if you don't ask for help early on, your depression and your situation might just snowball and become worse and worse and worse. I would just recommend asking for help, especially if you have somebody that really, really loves you. I'm blessed in that area. I have really amazing friends that are so there for me. I've reached out to a pastor recently. I've reached out to an old friend. I've reached out to a friend that I've known. I also just like to talk to my friends. And my next tip is to talk to anybody that you trust and tell them about how you're feeling. Don't just talk to them to have a chat and just kind of like, you know, have that connection with humanity. Like sometimes you're, you might be lonely or depressed and you wanna call a friend just to not feel alone, but by the time you hang up, you've never really told them what you're really going through. And to keep it a secret, it's just gonna fester and grow, and grow and get worse and it's gonna make you feel like no one really cares, but when in reality, they were not given the permission or the opportunity to show you that they cared because they might show up in a big way and really, really support you and do their level best to be the friend for you that they, they want to be and sometimes people's help might not be everything you need so you might have to express to them like what you need like hey i'm going through a hard time i've been really depressed like oh well come over let's watch a movie but in reality you're like oh i actually really wanted to go on a hike i'm thinking of a specific place here in missouri that's really beautiful there's also a favorite spot of mine um where the river you can walk up to the river and it, like flows over this road that gets flooded and it's like a mini mini waterfall and the rapids are going crazy Anyways, I'm side tangenting, but definitely tell your friends and your people what you need in support. If if they're the type of friend that you feel comfortable doing that with, or maybe push yourself out there and, and tell them, you know, like, I, I don't know where we are in our friendship, but I'm going through a really hard time and you're the only person that I can think of to go to. Would you be willing to just sit with me, talk with me, go with me to this one park I've always wanted to go to? Uh, or whatever, just don't be afraid to be vulnerable. I feel like in society nowadays, people are so afraid to say what they need, what they really want, how they're feeling, and express their genuine vulnerable thoughts towards another person of what they're going through, what they might need. Can you be there for me in this way? We're all so afraid to express what we need and then we secretly get annoyed and feel rejected and not loved because we're not willing to put ourselves out there. Another tip I have, and this might be like, off the beaten path or kind of out of nowhere is to trust your gut and to trust your instincts. Sometimes when you're going through depression, it's circumstantial. You know, you might be environments that are really unhealthy that kind of make you second guess yourself. It starts put it, pushing down your self-esteem, but you know, like, is, is this me or is this normal? Is it whatever? Sometimes it's like, take a step back and don't ignore red flags if they're blaring. Sometimes we're so used to red flags, we don't know how to function in a healthy way because it's just so normal for us to be around unhealth. But every once in a while, you gotta be your own advocate and trust your gut, trust your instincts, trust what your heart is telling you and don't second guess yourself. And maybe by going back to tip number one, removing yourself from the situation might give you the room you need to reflect back and be like, no, I'm much happier now that I'm not there. And lo and behold, my depression is slowly fading away because I'm not in a situation that's constantly eating away at my self-esteem and my self-worth. Sometimes it's, it, it, it's impossible sometimes to just, you know, fake it till you make it in certain situations. If it's not happening, it's not happening. Why should you subject yourself to an environment that's just gonna constantly beat you down? Why not be in an environment that cultivates you and helps you grow and helps you grow and you're not like a flower having to grow up through concrete? It's happened, but it would be a lot easier if it was just like normal soil and the sun can just shine down. My next tip is to take care of your body and mind, to treat it with health and with love. Don't just constantly feed your body junk food, you know, eat way too much sugar, just sit around and do nothing and just veg out to unhealthy, depressing TV shows. And I am preaching to the choir. This was me recently. I was eating like crap. I was eating all the sugar I wanted and I was watching way too many crime shows that really just weren't good for me. Like it just basically feeds the fuel of my non-trusting people and all people are bad. The world's a crappy place. Watching documentaries called Rotten about like the corrupt, you know, industries of the world when it comes to avocado, honey, almond butter, and things like that. If you're going through a downtime, don't, like they say, don't beat a dog when it's down. Don't put, don't do that to yourself. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're surrounding yourself with constantly depressing things. Like, like it's not going to help you feel better when you're already feeling so crappy. I know that there's sometimes like a guilty pleasure or like, I don't even know, it feels good to almost be melancholy and depressed, as depressing as that sounds, but that just then will help reinforce keeping you down if you're constantly finding reasons to be kept down. 
eat healthy, make sure that you're drinking wisely if you do drink. And I am talking about alcohol and substances, but make sure also that you're drinking enough water, that you're not ignoring that because hydration is really important for the brain. You don't want a dehydrated brain and you don't want to be dehydrated. Keep active, eat healthy, eat a lot of healthy nutrients, take supplements if you need to, and get out in nature, get out in the sun. Maybe if you haven't heard of grounding before, just plant your feet on some grass and be out and get some natural vitamin D it will really just feel good. It leaves you feeling good and that healthy tired where you just got back from the pool or the beach. My next tip is to, is to do something. Do something that you're good at that you'll feel better for yourself for having done. Are you good at playing the guitar? Are you good at painting? Are you good at drawing? Are you good at writing? Are you good at you know skateboarding, rock climbing? Do something that you're good at. Do something that you're good at that you haven't done in a while. Do something new that you, you have always wanted to try but never had the opportunity. I've always wanted to go ax throwing. I know that's random. Those stores keep popping up in my neighborhood. So take yourself out on a day date or bring a friend or go by yourself and challenge yourself to do something new. I found a recent DIY craft store in my neighborhood. I also painted for the first time recently and it just feels so good to do the things that you love that are mindless, that you are good at or something to, like have freedom of doing it. Don't put so much pressure on yourself of being a perfectionist, but do things that bring you joy that take yourself out of yourself, if that makes sense. My other tip is at this point to just accept yourself for who you are. A lot of times depression comes from trying to be something that we're not. We have this idolized version of ourselves and we wanna attain that goal. But geez, like, you know, growth is not linear. It's up, down, up, down, back, forth, up and right down. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a hard process. And sometimes when you just give yourself a break, give yourself a break the way you wished other people would give you a break or maybe the self-perceived version of other people needing to give you a break. Sometimes it's literally, it's all inside. Sometimes it's literally in your head. And that I think was a commercial for McDonald's. I don't know. Anyways, just accept yourself for who you are. Your, the way your mind was created and all that, and it'll give you the freedom of growing, growing and thriving and sur thriving to the best of your ability because you're not so negative on yourself and really try hard to catch those negative thoughts, even if it's just for a day or a week or whenever you're going through these deep, dark depressions, give yourself permission to just be you and to not try to be this amazing person and by removing yourself from social media, getting out in nature, being alone, you might just be like, wow, I really enjoy myself and my own company and I love me. Not in a conceited, like, I'm so amazing way, but like, you know, you're a badass and you're doing pretty good. You've gotten this far, like, you're fine. You're gonna be okay. Also, another tip is to cry it out. Don't beat yourself up for crying it out. Don't compare yourselves to other don't other people. Don't be like, well, my situation's not as bad as their situation, so I shouldn't really cry. Don't diminish your feelings just because somebody else might perceive it, perceivably have it harder than you. Allow yourself to feel your feelings. Allow yourself to sit in it. Cry really hard. Sit in the shower. Cry as hard as you can. And it actually really, because really, if ever you're just trying to hold it in, because when I'm depressed, I don't cry. I literally hold it in and I numb out. But sometimes you just need to cry it out and be like, no, I'm having a really, 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 really tough time and it's not really easy. For me, trying to hold it in, it was coming out in all different ways and I was crying. I just wasn't able to have a really good cry. So I was crying in front of basically strangers and people at my last job would like come in my office and I would just start like, it was like a dam holding up my emotions and the dam was cracking and it just busted. But that then allowed myself to just the pressure of trying to hold it all together was so overwhelming and once i just allowed myself to feel my feelings i did take a break from my job it ended up being like completely leaving it which just wasn't what i was expecting but i literally that day after speaking to my boss um who i love and adore and everything was good and they were supportive of me but i took a step away and i literally just broke down and cried literally for hours that day because I was just like trying to hold in the emotion of the loss of my dad and everything for months on end just got to me and it was coming out in all different ways. I definitely just recommend if you need to give yourself permission to give yourself a good cry, do it. Another tip I have for you is to get your thoughts out, you know, not just to other people, but journal, write a gratitude journal. What are you grateful for? What's going good for you? You could also, you know, creatively like paint, you could free paint, like doodle your thoughts, doodle what you're feeling and what you're going through. It doesn't always have to just be writing because sometimes writing can just, I sometimes write all my exact thoughts and my hands tired by the end of it. But if, if you want to free paint and just kind of paint out your emotions, you know, modge podge it and rip out pieces of a book and just be really creative with how you're feeling. I recently joined a class that a friend put on. It was like a two day long workshop and, um, 
my painting did not turn out how I expected. It ended up being really red and dark. Here, let me actually go get it. It's not my typical painting and um, it was inspired. There was a theme to it and there, it was a guided painted workshop, but there was a lot of freedom to do what you want. But this is the painting, if you could even see that. So it was a lion that represented God in the wilderness and hope in the valley because I felt like I was like walking through the valley of the shadow of death. No, no hard feelings and the stars. And it's almost like it's going through sadness, but there's hope at the other side. So that was uh, here. Let me put myself back in focus. That was a workshop that I did that was like amazing and I really loved it. So if you can maybe give yourself parameters like I'm going to paint a bird and then I'm just going to like put words on it that make express the way I'm feeling like it might be like a really freeing experience and you might be happy at the end of it something along those lines I don't know it's just a thought um other tip for me from me to you is to do something for somebody else it really gets yourself out of yourself and it makes you really really happy and those endorphins start flowing and it's like here here's my gift or here's the thing I did for you or I actively like cleaned your room or I cleaned your house or I drove all this way to pick this thing up for you that you couldn't get yourself and you know reach out to people that might be struggling themselves it might not Having it not be about you might be the thing you need to get yourself out of yourself. <laughs> Another tip I have is to treat yourself. Um, maybe go to, you know, a new restaurant. Don't break the bank. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Treat yourself to a spa, a massage, you know, get yourself like a new shirt or that little ring that you wanted, or just give yourself a little treat and give yourself permission to spoil yourself. I don't, I know we're not dogs and sometimes there's a, like a bad rap, like, you know, I deserve a treat because I didn't this for like one day. Like I was healthy for a day. So here's a treat. Not along those lines, but uh, along the lines of giving yourself permission to love yourself. There's obviously the five love languages, which is words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service and gifts. And are you the kind of person, how, how could you love you in a way that would make yourself feel loved? Love yourself, you know? Another thing I suggest is, this might not be everybody's typical thing, but put on some music, sing and dance and have fun and maybe clean up that thing that's been driving you crazy for so long. Because for me, my surroundings make me more depressed. If I'm depressed and my place is a mess, I'm even more depressed. But if I put on music, music gets me out of whatever I'm going through and it allows me the freedom of like not being so miserable. Like say, tell yourself, use the Pomodoro technique. I'm all over the map right now because I'm excited. Use the Pomodoro technique. Say, I'm going to listen to this album at the end of this album, however far I've gotten with cleaning this up that's where it's gonna be. And I know that we all can get in a tendency of when we're cleaning, like putting on all the jewelry that we found or like putting on the hat or getting distracted, try to stay focused. Just dance, sing, enjoy the moment and organize that one thing that's been driving you crazy or clean up that one area that's been driving you crazy and you'll feel that much lighter. It really, really helps me. All I have to do is just be like, whew, give myself 30 minutes. I'm gonna do these dishes that I haven't done in a really long time. And before you know it, your whole kitchen's clean and it feels amazing. And I know that I've already said this earlier in this video, but the last thing I wanna say before I end my tips on how to handle mental health in a really trying time is to seek professional help. Reach out to your friends, your family, your loved one. If you're struggling, be like, hey, can you help me try to get to a therapist? And it's okay that if you don't connect with your therapist right away, Maybe you aren't a good fit for them. I've had therapists that weren't bad. They just weren't right, the right fit and I didn't feel fully comfortable. But I just caught myself holding back. And I don't know, there's something about certain therapists I've had where I've always just fully trusted them and it was a really safe environment. And I feel like it really helped me to um, get out of whatever I was going through. So what is it that you all do to help yourself whenever you're struggling? Really, really, I'm really curious. I really wanna know. So let me know in the comments below. And obviously, if you stayed to the end of this video, I said I had a really exciting announcement. And that is I completed my new YouTube channel that I know I mentioned in my last video. I have a few videos in the pipeline. Maybe by the time this video is uploaded, they will be uploaded. If not, they'll be uploaded soon. But that it's called Ardell's Adventures and I just do whatever I want. Nothing and everything and anything in between over on that channel because I needed like a creative outlet with filming and adventures and things like that. So if that's something you're interested, I have the link in the description. I'm going to link that channel and hopefully you know I'll be able to take you all with me on more excursiony type things and or tutorials or whatever but I'm super excited about that so check it out and I'm also bonus end of video announcement starting to paint again and I want to implement painting a butterfly of the week and so 
I'm going to start that next video. And so I'm going to be starting butterflies of the week because I don't know, there's something about those creatures that really, really make me happy because I feel like, you know, they start off such a different form of what they become when they go inside themselves in the dark confusion of their chrysalis. Same with moss. Moss are awesome too because moss have um, cocoons, not a butterfly. Butterflies have chrysalis. So I want to start painting moss and butterflies and um, because I think that their journey through whatever they go through is so crazy that by they by the time they metamorphosize metamorphosis into the butterfly, it's like they don't they're not even recognizable, you know. And it took a lot of growth from when they were a baby little caterpillar, like dee, 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 to a big caterpillar, and then they like hunker down and they work on themselves and they change, and then they have to do the work of getting out of whatever their cocoon or their chrysalis, and then their butterfly wings are all like not ready to fly yet. So even when you do hard work, sometimes you're like, oh, I still don't feel like I'm there yet. But then. You spread your wings and prepare to fly, for you have become a butterfly, whoa, whoa. Okay, we all know by now I love Mariah Carey, so. Anyways, I'm gonna be painting the butterfly of the week, so if there's any butterflies you want me to paint, or any moths, I am gonna be painting moths. I already have a long laundry list of those because of y'all's recommendation over on my Instagram account. So I'm super excited about that. And without further ado, if you've made it to the end of the video, this is what I'm going to be praying for you because I want to start implementing that as well to pray for my viewers. Because I always say, y'all must know by now that you're in my prayers and how will you know if you don't know? So now you know. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this channel and this opportunity to speak to the people around the world that might be struggling with mental health, you know, addictions, brain issues, brain health, and things of that nature, God. Just thank you, God. I ask that you help me guide them and them guide me and that we create a community that is full of growth and um, health. And I ask God that you bless all of the viewers and the people that have seen this video. And I pray that you help them to have a really good day and to thrive in whatever they're going through. And if they're going through struggles, help them to have the strength to get through it because life is not a walk in the park. It can be really, really hard. God, and I just pray that you... You just support everybody with what they're going through and, and show them that you care. So with that, amen. With that said, amen. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, give it one big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. I'm super excited. Bye.